Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 159 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of July 21st, 2017. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me as always is Woodgrain Finish, Dan Ryan. I feel like it's better than being black and red, Dan Ryan. Like, I would prefer <laughs> to be Woodgrain if I have to be one over the other. I think it's a wise choice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. We've decided to do a follow-up to last week's episode, plus uh, there's a ton of news to talk about after the break, but before we go any further, here is your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at com. Just include the word Stone Age Gamer in the subject line, you can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or just say hello, because we always want to hear from you, the listener. So, Dan, how are you? I'm good, Chris. Um, you know, I, I just mentioned to you uh, before we started that the uh, the Eleven Funko Pop is one of uh, one of my favorites that I have. But there was one Funko Pop that uh, well, there there are two that have eluded me in my uh, my collecting of Funko Pops, which to be fair is not all that hardcore. Um, one of them being the Rocketeer uh, Funko Pop, which is. Ooh. Which is just gorgeous, and I, the Rocketeer is something we could talk about for for days. Like it, we it's, could. It is one of those properties that I just I love to little bitty pieces, and wish that there was so much more of it than there actually is. But apart from the Rocketeer Funko Pop, there was a a Hot Topic exclusive Funko Pop, and and now as an adult male, I don't spend a ton of time in Hot Topic. As anymore, like I used to when I was younger, but like that's where I got my sweet Dragon Ball shirt from. <laughs> They're still not sweet. I mean, you keep telling yourself, but like whatever. Um, They're sweet to me, goddamn it. They're uh, well, gorgeous. That's all that matters. And like it is, it is kind of weird now because like my kids want to go into Hot Topic, like so that's a little strange. Of like, all right, this this isn't the the moments I thought we would share together. Like going to the diner, <laughs> like going to a baseball game, like bonding over Hot Topic is weirder. But like whatever, uh, Hot Topic has cool shit now. And uh, they did have an exclusive Funko Pop that, uh, that Tiff just got for me. Um, I don't know where the hell she got it from, somewhere online. And it was the uh, Clark Kent uh, pulling the shirt open to be Superman, but he's got like, it's reporter Clark Kent with the glasses and the gray hat, and it's just, it's Christopher Reeve from the movie. It's fucking, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> that is now sitting on top of my, uh, of my Echo, and, uh, pretty excited. So, I'm, there's that. I'm very happy for you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Made me happy. It's nice to, like, come home from work and be like, oh, there's a package for me. Oh, shit! Like, you know, completely It's this unexpected. thing I've been looking for it's forever. It's this thing I've wanted for, like, two years now. That's awesome. Right on. That's fantastic. Mm hmm So I, um, over this past weekend, I spent a day at the beach with my family. And, of course, going to the beach means also going to the boardwalk. And I finally had a chance to play Space Invaders Frenzy. Yeah? Have you, have you seen this thing? I've heard. I have not seen or played. It is absolute insanity, and I love it. It's I love it to death. It is a frenzy, as they claim. Oh, it is. It's completely insane. So it's almost like a cross between um, uh, Space Invaders and Missile Command. Okay. Which is pretty wild, because it doesn't really have any Missile Command markings, but there are explosions that are very just very specifically Missile Command in this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Uh, have you seen the world's largest Pac-Man? You mm -hmm. seen those machines? Mm -hmm. It's on it's 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 on that exact same screen. So actually, the the arcade oh, I played cool. it at had you know world's biggest Pac Man right next to uh, Space Invaders Frenzy. You sit down in it, and there's a giant like cannon that you sit behind, nice. and you move the cannon, and it aims on the screen. You have a cursor on the screen, so you can always tell where you're aiming. And then just hundreds of Space Invaders <laughs> just start showing up, <laughs> and you just shoot the shit out of them. And it's two player simultaneous. So I played it with my niece, and uh, the two of us are just blowing up space invaders like crazy i think we got to like level four or something and um 
it was just absolute insanity. And like you, you, I don't even know what exactly caused it. I think like something shows up on the screen and you shoot it and the big missile command explosion shows up, which like sits there for a minute and blows up the space invaders, nice. similar to how like one explosion will blow up a couple of missiles and missile command. So it's, it's like that exact thing. And it's just madness. It's so good. That's and awesome. It's, it's, and it's not even something that you could port to a home console. Like it's, no. it's such an arcade thing yeah, I'm, because I'm, it's on I'm that giant at, fucking screen. You know, I'm looking at pictures of it right now, and this is something that I need to. Uh, I, I need. I need to have this. I need <laughs> you, to have you, this happen in my life. You absolutely have to try it. It's just. I mean, it's kind of like the. It's. It's one of those very uniquely arcade experiences, and I love that it exists. And there needs to be more of this kind of stuff. That's just like, yeah, like you could play this at home on a screen, but it's never going to be this. You're never going to be sitting in a chair with the subwoofer shaking your ass and just. God, that game was so much fun. It was awesome. That's awesome. Really and loud, I, really fantastic. And I do love Space Invaders. It had like that fucking um that alien, the like big black silhouetted monster with the like Oh, the on the original eyes. cabinet. Yeah. It's one of my favorite designs in like all of video game history. I I was fascinated by that thing as a kid and terrified by it, dude. Like just I don't know what that noise was, but that sounded very flatulent, which is kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't make any noise. I, whatever you just did to your microphone sounded great. Um, but like, I like th- it, <laughs> okay. As a kid, like it was, I, I just I was fascinated by that thing, and then like playing the game, like there is nothing nearly as scary as that thing looks. But that thing is terrifying. Yeah, it's awesome. I love him. Yeah, the Space Invaders is one of those things that they've done a really good job of uh, reinventing uh, over the years. Like, I was just, um, I got a Raspberry Pi last week, and so I've been just futzing around with it, and I wound up playing Space Invaders for Game Boy Color for the first time in years, like, I, and it's so goddamn good. It's, I, I, it's I played great. the crap out of that game back when it came out, and I was genuinely surprised at just how good it is. And um, it, that game holds up exactly well. Like, I was playing the crap out of it, and I, I just didn't want to stop. I was playing it for, like, at least a half an hour. And Yeah, it's, man, it's as that. fun now as it, as it ever has been. Um, good news, though, Chris. I am looking. Uh, you can purchase a Space Invaders Frenzy <laughs> arcade cabinet. Um, $6,000? Not even close. It does have free shipping, though, so, you know, take that into consideration. Um, thirteen thousand three hundred ninety. Oh, thirteen thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars. Wow, that's a lot of nuts. Is it? Is it worth that much? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe the game room guys <laughs> are overpriced. What do I know? But I like if I was in. If I owned an arcade, sure, it might be worth that much. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's awesome. The other thing that I've uh, I've I've spent some time with that I need to talk about is the trial of the sword in uh, Breath of the Wild. It's that good, huh? Well, I ha- it, it's it's very good. It's it's very hard. Um, That's good, uh, though, I, right? It, oh yeah, it's and it's designed to be. It's like the, I'm on the third trial. It's the last one, and it's just a series of dick moves. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I got to the third, like, I, I blew through the first two trials with relative ease. Like, they're tough, but they weren't, like, so hard. Like, I, I got through them after a couple of tries. This third one I've I've spent some time on, and I've, you know, made some bad decisions and some, some dumb deaths, and it's so long, and there's no saving in it. So, like, you have to start from the beginning every time. That sucks. So, I took some time off of it. I don't, I I don't have that much time. I jumped back into it last night, and um, I, I got all the way to the end of it, and, and I died. But So the first chunk of it is a series of stages in a thunderstorm, and there's water everywhere. So if lightning strikes near you and you're standing in water, you're going to lose some health. Uh, there's right. also lots of metal weapons just sticking out of the ground. Nice. Acting as lightning rods. So you're sure. fighting something, and then all of a sudden like you hear the sound of... Uh, lightning getting ready to strike and then it strikes and you know 
you got to stay the fuck away from it because uh, <laughs> it'll hurt. So after you get through the first chunk of uh, a chunk of it, which is all rain and, and lightning storms, and you can't use any metal weapons or metal shields or metal bows uh, because you'll get struck by lightning if you do. <laughs> <laughs> then it moves on to super hot stuff. So you're in a volcano. And uh, so they give you the flame resistant pants, which is nice. Uh, but then like, you can't use any of your wooden weapons and stuff. Uh, so then you get through all the fiery stuff and you get to all the ice stages and you have to be, you have to be eating uh, like hot spicy food or wearing right. a flaming item or you're going to consistently be losing health the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so I mm-hmm. figured once I got past that, that should be it. Cause you know, the first one was only one round. The second one was two rounds. So I figured this one was three rounds, but no, there's four rounds in this one. And the last round is just a bunch of fucking guardians. Nice. And I'm like, you gotta, be, you gotta be kidding me, because guardians with the master sword is no big deal. But you don't have the master sword in this. You <laughs> go into all this stuff with no items, so I'm breaking everything on these things. And um, I, I use things called ancient arrows that'll basically one hit kill anything in the game, uh, and they give you three of them, which is nice. nice. Uh, I got to one stage where I just you know, opened up and I, I land in the stage and there's a Lionel in front of me. And the Lionel is that thing that I fought for like 40 hours yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really good at fighting those things, but uh, they take a ton of hits and I was going to break a lot of weapons if I fought this guy. So I used one of my ancient arrows on it. And uh, then I got to more guardians and I used up all of my, I uh, used up the other ones, my ancient arrows. And I finally made it to the last screen um, which I looked up afterwards, it was the last last screen. And as soon as you land and like you teleport into this 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 area, as soon as you land, about twenty bokoblins on horseback are rushing at you. Like there's there's no they don't get your attention. Like it's just they're already running at you. And in the back of them is a Lionel. So there's twenty bokoblins with bows and arrows and spears on horses rushing at you. A Lionel, and then just to make things even more fun, there's a tower with a gun turret on top of it. It's just shooting, la- <laughs> it's just shooting lasers at you. Nice. So I was like, "All right, well, I've used all of my healing. Um, I have no fairies left. I've used all of my, all of my food, and I'm almost out of weapons. But I'm going to give this a go." So I run not? around, and I, I finally get to my myself to a point where I think I'm safe, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm climbing up the, this tower, and the Lionel's all the way on the other side of the room, and he's just lobbing arrows at me, but I'm hiding behind a tower. So I'm like, <clears throat> there's this big, thick tower of bricks in front of me. He's not going to be able to hit me. Now, if I see him shoot straight up, then I know that I'm in fucking trouble, because that's something that Lionel's will do. If you, if you go far away from them, they don't ignore you. They never ignore you. And once they've seen you, they want you dead. So if you Naturally. go far enough away from them, you'll watch. You'll see the Lionel shoot straight up in the air, and then arrows will just rain down on your head with pinpoint accuracy, because <laughs> Lionels are fucking evil. <laughs> But he wasn't doing that. He was just shooting straight at the wall. So I, you know, I'd climb up, I'd take a few shots at the gun turret, and then when he was ready to target me, I'd fall back down, and I'd just go up and down. The bokoblins aren't bothering me because they can't reach me. So I'm like, all right, if I can kill this turret, then I can start picking off the... I might have enough arrows to start picking off uh, some of the bokoblins, and even if I don't, I have bombs that I can throw at him, and I'll just take my time, and then whatever weapons I have left, I'll use on the Lionel and see what I can do. But then the Lionel shot straight through the tower and killed me. <laughs> you know, like those things where you see in a game where like, you know, something happens and you know, something clips through a polygon. Like it's not really supposed to do that, but yeah. it just clips through the explosion that is arrows create because they're you know exploding arrows. The explosion the arrows created on the other side of the tower was big enough to clip through the fucking tower and one shot kill me. Jesus Christ. God Damn it! So now I have a plan, and I'm 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 going through again because I gave up last night. I, I I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna live without this. I don't even want to do this room. I have no interest in spending the time and doing all this shit again. And then I slept on it. I woke up and said, no, this game's not gonna fucking beat me. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no. I've plotted. I've I've schemed. The shit thought is going about down. It. I'm, I'm going to approach this differently, and I found out, uh, I did a little bit of looking online, I saw somebody beat it, and I okay. found that there are six more ancient arrows I didn't know about. Oh, So I go. think with a total of nine ancient arrows, I should be able to do this. So, the full splendor of the Master Sword will be mine, Dan. It will be mine. That's awesome. 
I'm very happy for you. Have I you will... even sniffed this game yet, man? No, I haven't, because I'm a horrible person and a bad friend. Is really what I it said. Comes down if to. I mail this to you, will, will you I play it? it? And right, you, you said didn't. Yes, you didn't give me a time limit on when I had to play it. Though. I will play it <laughs> someday before you're dead. It's, we, it, but if you get a Switch before you decide to play Zelda, play Zelda on Switch. Well, it um, what it came down to was. Uh, excuses that didn't make a lot of sense but mm -hmm. <laughs> but then we decided to uh move the kids bedroom because we have in two of our bedrooms because we're fucking fancy one of them was functioning as the girls playroom mm -hmm. and in the playroom was the old tv we had and the wii u was up there and that shit was always a fucking mess because it's a kid's playroom and yeah. like we had decided that all right fuck it we're going to um Whatchamacallit, we're gonna, like, we're gonna switch the girls' room so it just became an even bigger fucking mess, because then things just got piled and all that shit happened, but, I, like, I think I mentioned it last week, how I just spent way too much fucking money at Ikea to uh, buy the yeah. kids, like, new beds and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now everything's switched over. It's almost all put back to, like, a spot where you can actually, like, sit down and be comfortable with it, so, like, I will start it soon. Okie dokie. It's happening soon. Not, not this week because I'm flying to Colorado this weekend. But, <laughs> but, but when I get back, my cousins get married, so I'm flying out there. Like I'm flying out Saturday morning, and I'm flying back Monday morning. Like it's gonna be a That's whirlwind kind of trip. Yeah. Well, but you know, you know if you had I'm, a switch, I'm gonna you watch. would be able to play it on the phone. You would be able on to play phone? it on the plane. On, on, the, <laughs> I, on the phone. I can yes, play it on the on the phone, the phone, yes. and the plane. Yes. Um, I'm going to watch on the flight out. I'm going to watch, um, NXT for the week and, uh, the Netflix Castlevania series. Oh, that's great. I'm going to watch. I haven't watched it yet, so I'm going to watch that. And then we can talk about that a little bit next week. And then, uh, for the flight home on Monday, cause my cousin gets married on Sunday. Um, so then like Sunday night, obviously like we'll be doing, you know, like family stuff and whatnot. Um, so after that. Uh, there's a, there's a pay-per-view this weekend, WWE Battleground. So I'm going to watch that on the flight home on Monday and it'll be, uh, it'll be all good. All right. Yeah. So, so there you go. That's, so, so uh, there you go. That's what's happening. That's our show. Good night, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for listening. This is your reminder once <laughs> again that you can send us your thoughts at mail at geekade.com. Where we All right, so uh, yeah, so here's what we're we're gonna do. We we decided to do a play a little game on last week's uh, listener request one where we talked about games that we like that nobody else likes. Now we're gonna talk about games that everybody else likes that we don't like. And I came up with a I came up with a pretty decent list. How many you got? Uh, I don't know. I uh, just a number of them off the top of my head. I didn't I didn't get too technical and write them down this week because I figured we'd see where the conversation takes us. I would like to start, though, if you don't mind. Go ahead, fire us up. The Sims. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't fucking understand that shit even a little bit. <laughs> like I really don't. Like it, it. I understand the desire for like the the virtual aspect of things. Mm -hmm. Um, that game is not good. It doesn't look good. It doesn't control well. It's annoying. I've never played it. I don't understand I have how it is no a... opinion on it because it has never interested me enough even to try. But dude, like that game sells millions of copies. Does it still? Well, I mean, it did, and it, it still did. is it, out. And they would make new expansions like every couple of months, and it would still sell like freaking hotcakes and a half. It's crazy. Uh, my my niece plays it. My niece is twelve years old. She's fucking obsessed with it. It's probably the game she plays the most. Yeah, I'm with you on not really understanding it. I, I uh, don't get it. Like, I tried <laughs> to play it. I was dating a girl back in high school, and, like, her sister was big into it, and she was like, yo, you like video games. You got to play this one. And I was like, all right, I'll check this out. Now, I, I loved like, Sim City, and I loved Sim City yeah. 2000. I, I and, am uh, not that interested. That was where I stopped. Like, I'm not interested in having to make my character take a piss. Like I, yeah, like, yeah. Like all I've ever heard about that game is like you can get this, you can build four walls around them, and they'll go insane. I'm like, yeah, okay, like, that's, why would you do that? 
Like I, I've played Lemmings, guys. Like I blew up all the Lemmings. <laughs> I got over it. You know, <laughs> I don't need to do this again. Yeah, I just I don't. It, like The Sims is not a thing th- that I do not understand the popularity of. Like especially because, like they don't even they don't even speak like in a normal language. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just it's Sims so speak. it's so weird. I don't understand how it got to the level of popularity that it did. Because you're right, like, it seemed that there was a time where every other week there were six new Sims expansion packs. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I just, was yawning. Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> Thinking about it, the Sims. It made, that, it made that fun noise again, so that's good. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with Injustice. I disagree with you on this one. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's attractive. I think it does a massive disservice to all the DC characters, particularly in the character design department. If anyone thought that Jim Lee's New 52 characters uh, character designs were over-designed, uh, then they must really want to vomit when they see Injustice, because everyone looks terrible. Everyone animates terrible. It's. I don't think it's a good game. I don't think it's fun. I don't think it's amusing. It's... And it's really just stems from my general distaste of Netherworld, uh, yeah, Netherrealm games. Like I don't like any of their modern Mortal Kombat stuff. I don't hate. I just hate, hate the way that they move and the way that they look in motion. And I, I the, the applying it to the DC characters and so far over the top, but in the, very much the wrong direction. It's just. Oh god! Just, I don't know. just thinking I, of the characters moving and talking to each other makes me want to throw up in my mouth. You're not wrong on any of those points. However, it's the most badass Aquaman has ever been. Like one of his moves, a shark comes in and bites you. <laughs> like, I bites do not need a, a. That's the most badass that he's ever been in a video game, I suppose. But I don't need to, there. The, this this the scene in uh, the the panels in. New 52 Justice League number one, when they introduce mm. Aquaman, he's all, what can you do? And he turns around and he summons, like, an ocean of sharks to eat all those fucking parademons, and then he, like, beats up a bunch of other guys. Or his yeah, comic in New dope. 52, the Jeff Johns run on that Aquaman. That was excellent. Was also ec- excellent. Like, I fucking yeah. love Aquaman. He's one of my favorite superheroes. And I just, no, no. I, I don't I don't care. I don't like the way he looks. I love the idea. They do all these things that sound really cool on paper, but they can't execute this shit. And I don't get why there's... You do something in the comics that's like, oh my god, they changed like Aquaman's fins on his legs are too long. Or Wonder (laughs) Woman's wearing pants, for God's sake. No, Wonder Woman can't wear pants. Like, you do that kind of shit in the world of comic books, and it's like you just... You just d- raped someone's mother and their dog at the same time. Yeah. And it's like, it's just, it's h- holy hell is will be wrought down upon you for doing something like that in the world of the comic books. But when somebody makes a game like Injustice, it's like, yeah, man, that's fantastic. I, I, I love the fact that, that Harley Quinn can take on fucking Doomsday. I, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and mm. like that shit works. That shit works to a degree in something like Marvel vs. Capcom, where you have like Sakura from Street Fighter Alpha taking on the Juggernaut, because it's it's so far ridiculous, so far removed from ridiculousness, and it looks all cartoony and stuff. But this game, like, is so like over the top gritty, and this is what like a thirteen year old kid thinks hardcore awesomeness is, and it just ugh, ugh. That's how I feel about Injustice. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so I your, your turn. <laughs> I, I mean, you're right. Like, you're not wrong. I, I disagree. I had fun playing it, but it, it's not great. I, yeah. Um. All right. So, <laughs> this one, um, and I don't mean any of it. Like, and please, listeners, like, don't take any of it. Like, we're not personally attacking any of you. Um. If like. Like, if you're sitting there, like, and you're driving right now, and you're listening to the podcast, and you're like, fuck these assholes, Injustice is the greatest game ever. Here is my missive on why they're so fucking wrong. Ah, eat all the dicks. Like, that's not... <laughs> Send your responses to mail or kk.com. <laughs> Attention, Chris Randez. Attention, Dean DeFalco. Um, yes. 
<laughs> Attention Jengas. Um No, uh so like we don't like we're not we're not personally attacking. These are just things that Chris and I um happen to not understand and something that I've never ever understood and I've tried a couple of different ones um but that would be MMO RPGs as a genre and World of Warcraft in particular. <laughs> I didn't even write that one down because I figured you were going to say it and I would just <laughs> concur with you. I I just I I just don't understand it. And this is coming from a guy like we've talked about my obsession with Puzzle and Dragons on the show. This is a fucking puzzle game. Like I just logged in for day like 713 this morning. Like I <laughs> I understand the the somewhat borderline hypocrisy of these sorts of statements that I make here. But hold I just don't get it, man. Like I really really don't understand what is fun about that game. I've never yeah, see, had I've, fun playing them. I messed around with a little bit of World of Warcraft and a little bit of EverQuest like back in yeah, the day. It was yeah. at somebody's house and I was like, all right, I'll try this out. And it was only for like maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. And I was like, this is ugly. And no, just this isn't fun. I don't get it. And I, that's the thing. I, I almost could bet that if I really sat down and invested the time and played with people online that I might eventually get it. But I don't want to do all that stuff. Yeah. And I j basing an entire gameplay experience on like I like to play video games by myself. Like I like multiplayer too. I like local multiplayer the best. And I don't disparage the idea of having these social interactions with people online. No, but even sure. going back to Fantasy Star Online for Dreamcast, I don't get it. Like, yeah, I and that was okay in spurts, but like <laughs> Final Fantasy Eleven, EverQuest is is another one like you said. Like I Yeah. Final Fantasy Eleven. I was like, "Fuck! It's Final Fantasy, and like, it's online. This is gonna be. This is gonna be the one that's. This gonna, will be the one that gets me. This and, is, and boy, did it not even a little bit. Of course, that didn't get anyone. <laughs> well, no, Final sure, Fantasy. but but like it it didn't not get me for the reasons that it didn't not get other people. You know what I mean? Like it it didn't not get me because it was an MMORPG. <laughs> like that's yeah. That's the reason that I, I just, and like, I look at something like w World of Warcraft and what I, what I find so just kind of fascinating about that game is that it's a game that is played by all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Like my, one of my buddies from high school, his stepmom is still playing World of Warcraft. She's in her fucking sixties at this point. You know what I mean? And like. She's rocking her World of Warcraft account daily. Like, she posts on Facebook about it, and it's like, it's the craziest thing. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Get a job, you layabout. <laughs> God damn it. My social security dollars are paying for you to fucking play World of Warcraft. You know, <laughs> I just... But, like, as, as many 65-year-olds are playing World of Warcraft as, like, 25-year-olds... It's, and that it's that's nuts. bananas to me. Like, yeah, for a game that I just don't understand. And I've tried, I've tried many times. Can't get it. Don't understand. Not well. So uh, this one will probably get me in a little bit of trouble. Um, I have tried this. This isn't something that I don't understand why people like. It's just something that I don't like. Yo, if and you I'm, say. If you say Puzzle and Dragons, I'm fucking hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking off the show. Uh, it's Goldeneye for N64. Oh, I, man. See, I was going to say that, too, but I pushed out. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I just, I, totally I never, <laughs> I never had, like, the, I've had some good times playing it multiplayer, but only in, like, extreme instances of me just fucking with everybody like yeah because i can't get good at the game i can't i i and i don't care for the single player campaign i i never i never got this game the way everyone else did like i thought the multiplayer was neat i didn't think it was life altering and 
everyone fucking loves this game. And, you know, we talked about it when we were talking about the, uh, if they were going to make an N64 Classic Edition, they would need to have this on there because it's one oh, of the it would defining N64 games. But not for me. Like, I don't care about this game. And I have tried. I've tried to put some time into it, and it's it's just never it's never caught on with me. Um, well, and like yeah. for me, like for me, I think it's a good game. I don't understand why it is as popular and was as beloved as it was. Cause I, mean, it, I guess what, it, it must be because it's it was, never it been really that any- good. Yeah, but I guess there wasn't really anything else like it at the time. Like what other console four player first person shooters were there at the time? Um, pass. Double yeah, I, mean, I just, I just physical, don't think that they're physical challenge. The physical challenge. I, <laughs> I don't. I just. I think that was a large part of it. Was it's just there wasn't anything else quite like it, and you know the the maps were the maps. And I do love the the. the I think it's got a great soundtrack. Like, there's things I really appreciate about it. Like I look at this game, like I should like this, but I just don't. It does. It never clicked with me. Yeah. Well, I got I got one that kind of goes right along with that and and I legitimately have tried multiple times. I have tried at your house, Chris. <laughs> I uh, What Super, is it? I'm curious. Super Smash Brothers. Oh yeah, that's right. You don't I like just, this game. I just don't fucking like it. I don't like it at all. Like there's there's nothing <laughs> redeeming about that game for me it looks pretty sure there's a lot of cool collectible stuff in it that like i should love i get all that it's got a fantastic I, soundtrack there's it's got no a great soundtrack <laughs> i'll just listen to the soundtrack like i i really 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 don't understand why this game is so popular and so huge a success I would I, understand it as a niche kind of success, the dude, way like Mario a, Party you've is. You've got a game with every Nintendo character in it. Like, there's a big part of it. That's just mainstream success right there. It's a game with Mario, Pikachu, and Link in it. Like, yeah, but, of course uh, that's going to sell. Doesn't matter what the game is. It could be fucking. It could be anything, and it would have sold with those three characters in it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, just, I I don't think it's a good game. <laughs> like, I completely disagree. I know you do. I, I, I know yeah, that's I, blasphemy. I think it's a but fantastic like, game. Yeah, like being a a Street Fighter player, I can't fucking i I can't do it. I've tried. I can't. It's so like it's that's just it. It's so completely it. different from Street Fighter. So you don't even remotely play that like Street Fighter. But I try to, choose... and I can't not do it, Chris. Except when you choose Ryu, then you kind of do have to play it like a cross between Smash Brothers and Street Fighter, which is absolutely hysterical to me. They did such a good job of integrating that character into that game. It's ridiculous. I I just, I don't, I really, I don't understand it. God, I love Smash Brothers so much. I I was just watching some of the Evo stuff on it. Like, I love watching Smash, like, pros play Smash 4. Dear Lord, I love watching them play because it's so it's nothing I'll ever be able to do. It's almost Hmm. it's like watching. I I get as much out of that as I get as much out of watching like, you know, third strike players. They just pros third strike players just melt my brain. I just may have not been in. No, I'll save that for later. (laughs) I, I, I almost jumped in a story there. I just don't get it, man. I really don't. And like, again, not trying to offend everybody. And I know half the people listening to the show are like, this fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, I understand. I I understand. <laughs> I get the way that you feel about me right now. Like, I totally understand that point. But I and I've played with you, Chris. Like You have. I remember I've playing tried. Smash 4, and you were like, you, we played on the Mega Man stage, and you were like, yep. this is fucking cool. I'm not buying it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I played with Little Mac on the fucking Mega Man stage, and I was like, that's fun. All right. <laughs> like, yeah. Just and if anything was ever going to catch you, it was playing that was with gonna Little be Mac it. on the Mega Man stage. Nope. And like 
Nope. It's one of those situations like, I don't understand why you don't like it, but on paper, there's no reason that shouldn't have worked. No, there's but there's it, zero it reason. It just, it, it, game's it just has not for you. never I get clicked with me. Never, ever has that game clicked with me. My kids fucking love it. Love it. And they're like, Daddy, let's get Smash Brothers. Like, I haven't, I didn't buy Smash Brothers for the Wii U for them because I'm a terrible person because I don't want to play it with them. Like, I don't want to. Isn't that terrible? Like, they want you that could, game really bad. You have to, if you want to play I that know. game with your kids, all you got to do is pick a character you hate and then kill yourself a bunch of times. Then the two of them play together while you sit back and drink beer. I can't because I'm competitive, Chris. <laughs> it doesn't matter that they're eight. We you have would started make yourself get good at it. We have started, yo. <laughs> we have started recently playing Pokemon, like the training card game. The girls got, <coughs> each of the girls got a deck for their birthday, like the, the pre-made decks that you can buy. Uh-huh. The, there's four of us, Chris. The, there's two kids, two children got Pokemon decks. A month and a half later, we have six decks in the house now. Two of them are for the girls still. The other four for me and Tiff. Like, <laughs> you're gonna beat those little fucks. <laughs> I will because I bought a deck and I was like, "Yo, this deck is gonna fucking wreck everybody." <laughs> oh, terrible, Chris. <laughs> I wish I was lying. I wish I was. I love everything about that. <laughs> I wish I was. Right. I wish I was lying. Do you have any more? Because, I, I mean, I have a few more, but I don't think any of them is really going to top you beating your kids with Pokemon cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, like, yeah, there's, like, there's a couple that I don't understand. Like, Sonic the Hedgehog, I've ne it, that's another game that's never clicked with me. I've never thought it was fun. Like, and mm. I, know, I know there's a lot that you love about it, but, like, it just... Yeah, the original <laughs> Genesis ones, I really... Uh, most 2D Sonic games I genuinely enjoy. Yeah, like, um, I, I just, I've I never, never liked them. I, I, I can't say that I've never enjoyed 3D Sonic, because that'd be a lie. I really, really loved the first two levels of Sonic Adventure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, I, the, the demo? Of, yeah, pretty much like, you know, the, the, the demo, that first stage with the, the loop-de-loop -loop and the whale, that was, a, that was a, that's still a really fun stage to play. It's just great. And then the other stage with like the whirlwind in it and stuff. And then anything past that, I did not enjoy. Yeah, I've, like I didn't I've, like Sonic Adventure Two. I didn't like Sonic Heroes. I didn't like Sonic O Six. I did not like Sonic Unleashed. Um, I didn't didn't really mess with Sonic Generations. Um, that's not entirely. Like, I did kind of like Sonic and the Secret Rings, and I know people give me a lot of shit for that. That should have been on the last episode. Like, yeah, that, that's a game that everyone hates, and I was like. This is kind of a neat idea. I, I dig this. It's not amazing, <laughs> I, I but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't hate this. <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was a, a neat idea to, uh, to have Sonic move like that. But whatever. Uh, what the hell else? Like Sonic games have come out. Like there's Sonic Generations. Everybody loves. I didn't. I didn't mess with that. And uh, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. I, yeah well, I, and like, like the Sonic. other the other ones that I had. Like we've talked a little bit about like Skyrim. You know, like I was, I was mm -hmm. looking up the sales of like the top video game sales of all time because you know I was curious, and I, I sent you that list for future planning. But spoiling future episodes, how in the bluest of hells is Skyrim the the tenth best selling game of all time with thirty million units? Because it has been released on every platform, so and fucking continues what? to be released on every platform. But it's not thing good. is coming to Switch. And it's, uh, some people think it is. I, I, have, I have never played it. I can't say. I cannot judge it because I have not officially tried it. So, I, I don't get that one. Um, like I, the Rockstar things. We talked about that a little bit last week too. Like yeah, the Grand Theft Auto think games. Very good games. I, they're just they're not. Empirically, they're just not very good games. <laughs> you may be able to do a ton of stuff, but like Vice City, um, not Vice City, San Andreas. San Andreas sucks. That's a bad game. It's a bad game. It looks <laughs> ugly. It controls like shit. It's a bad game. Like, like <laughs> you can do all these things. And I guess if, if the fun is that you can do those things, then... 
good on you, I guess. But for well, me, but, the fun has never been that I can. Like, and it's it's a perfect example of like Smash Brothers. The fun has never really been that I can punch Pikachu in the face. Right. It's that it is fun to punch Pikachu in the face. Like I can run over hookers with a pickup truck. That's but not it's fun. not fun to run over hookers with a pickup truck because controlling the pickup truck is shit. Yeah, it, it's awful. It's awful. Like, I yeah. I just, I don't understand that. And, like, I know, and the one game that you had on your list that, uh, that you haven't mentioned yet, the second best-selling video game of all time, I think. Were you, are you going to get to it? I don't know. What is it? Minecraft. Oh, yeah, Minecraft. Yeah. And you know what? That one, like, I, I at least I see the appeal, more or less. I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand why it's so ugly. Like, it seems like it's like it was going for this weird retro look, but nothing's ever looked like that. Like, yeah, nothing has ever looked like that. You're crossing pixel art with Virtua Fighter, and it you works. somehow made it look worse than Virtua Fighter. But it works. It really does work. <laughs> Minecraft is a game where if you sit down with it, you get it. Yeah, and I and I don't know anybody honestly. Like, because I was the same way. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I just, I don't understand. And then I sat down with it, and I get it. Like, I've never met anybody who actually sat down with that game. Unlike the other stuff that we've talked about. Because I think everything else we've talked about, like, you can see where people had sat sat down, spent some time with it, and went, eh, not for me. You know, Minecraft, yeah. I've never met anybody that's like, nah, not into it. Like, everybody gets into Minecraft if you play it, so... I mean, I'll give I, it a try one of these days. I, I I really think you'll you'll find the charm and the enjoyment of it and whatnot. But yeah, fuck Smash uh, one, Brothers. One <laughs> game I don't think I'm ever gonna find the charm in is Final Fantasy VII. Mm. I I love that game soundtrack, and I think that's about where it stops for me. Man, like, I I don't I understand that. I consistently really try to enjoy that game, and I just I just can't. Uh, I'll never be able to get into Mass Effect. That was another one that I tried, and just it didn't get its hooks into me. Uh, the whole I, Fire Emblem series, Fire just, Emblem, I don't understand. I I don't get. They're what, okay. Yeah, I mean, like uh, that that kind of game isn't for me. But even the ones that I've played, like I'm you know messed around the demos or, or, or a little bit of, it's like all right, I guess. I, I can't distinguish this in my brain from Shining Force 3 on Saturn mm -hmm, or, or any mm -hmm. of the other games that are like it. And I, I know there is definitely something different about Fire Emblem. There has to be because that game has blown the fuck up since mm -hmm. coming to America. But I don't get it. And mm. it just it never sunk its hooks into me. Um, I didn't think Little Big Planet was all that great. Uh, it I got better. Yay! It's, it's still not, it's still not good at what it does. And it's that's, not it's that's not its great problem. at what it does. And when 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 you're trying to be a, a creative platform and you're not mm -hmm. great at the gameplay that you've created, that's a problem. We one one of the first things I did when we hooked up my PlayStation Three, my son John found uh, the box for Little Big Planet. I was like, I want to try this. I was like, All right, we'll try Little Big Planet. That sounds great. It still had my game save from when I played it back when it first came out, mm -hmm. and I couldn't figure out how to do anything, how to get in and out of stages. No, it's how completely to get back obtuse. To, it is such a shitty menu system. Like, mm -hmm. stop. Just no. Uh, I've never got the Assassin's Creed games. I think they look neat, but I don't think they're very fun. But and granted, I've only played the first one and a half. So the second one was better than the first one, and after that, mm -hmm. I didn't. I did not find the story engrossing enough to continue to mm -hmm. play the same game over and over again. Um, you know, and I've I've talked about the the glitch that I had in Assassin's Creed Three that was like, well, I'm never yeah. playing. Anymore. Never playing one of these again, because you can't <laughs> ship a game like that. You just can't do that. What are you, Enter the Matrix? No. <laughs> yeah, come on now, fuckers. I, and the last one is the original Golden Axe. That game's fucking know, dope. I don't know what you're talking Every, about. Everyone says that game's awesome. I'm like, this isn't... This, I don't know. It just doesn't... It doesn't do it for me. I are would, you Now, are you talking about the home version or the console version? Or the, the arcade version? Any version, really. Man, like, there's something arcade about it that so just doesn't... Fun. 
just doesn't grab me. Like it's just a beat 'em up and it's I don't know. It just doesn't hmm. I never I I have never understood the draw. Like it's neat, I suppose, but it's like you know, I, I, I it didn't come out at the same time as Turtles, but like as far as beat 'em ups go, like I love Double Dragon, love Final Fight, you know, I love Ninja Turtles and Turtles in Time and The Simpsons and X Men. Golden Axe just doesn't do it for me. Like I love Streets of Rage, just can't. I, I've is it never been able to get into Golden Axe. Is it possible that it is because I think Kevin Smith made this argument at some point on one of his shows? Um, might not have been Kevin Smith, but typically you fall into one of two categories. You're either Game of Thrones notwithstanding. You're either a sword and sorcery kind of person or a robots and aliens kind of person. Like you're either sci fi or like magic. Fine. Hmm. <laughs> I I don't know what like sword and sorcery I My favorite game series is Zelda, dude. I love swords and sorcery. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I love Lord of the like love Lord of the Rings. I love the idea of a of a mini like I love Gauntlet for fuck's sake. Yeah. Alright. That's that doesn't work then. I don't know. You're just wrong. <laughs> I think that's what it comes down to. You're just fucking wrong about that game. Golden Axe is fucking awesome. Like I, I and I really I don't understand why what you don't like about Final Fantasy Seven. But like I think it's the same way you feel with me with Super Smash Brothers. Like I don't understand why you don't like that game. And I can't even think of a reason that would be enough to convince you to like that game. Like I can't even think of how to explain that to you in a way that would make sense to you. You know what I mean? Like not that you're an idiot, not that you don't understand video games, but like if you're already coming at it from a I don't like this standpoint. Mm-hmm. I can think of nothing to say that would convince you otherwise. I feel like someday I'm going to have my Majora's Mask moment with Final Fantasy VII, where, like, so I didn't like the Majora's Mask for the longest time, and then I forced myself, just sat there and kept playing it until I liked it, and then I was like, <laughs> oh, this is fucking great. <laughs> like, like, it marriage. actually worked. It just, I had... <laughs> I had to force myself to do it, and... I've tried to force myself with Final Fantasy VII a bunch of times, and but I haven't gotten too. F- I haven't gotten much farther into it than like maybe an hour or so. Uh, aside uh, like from the, the first game, time I played it, the game hasn't even fucking started at that point. Like, and I that know. that is a knock against it. Like, to be fair, the fact that that game starts like five hours in, that's <laughs> not that's not a great selling point. It's a uh, it's it's it's. Uh, uh. Because it's not that you don't like role playing games. I do. I love Final Fantasy VI. I think Final Fantasy IX is awesome. I even dug Final Fantasy VIII to an extent. I like Final I, Fantasy VIII. I don't understand the hate for that game. I think it's that Squall just kind of sucks. Eh, whatever. The Gunblade <laughs> is cool. Like I, the Gunblade is cool. It's, he just he, he kind of sucks. <laughs> I don't know that he sucks any more than most of their other protagonists, though. Yeah, it's it's You know what point. I mean? Like I I don't I don't know that Squall sucks so much worse than like fucking I dude, I can't even tell you any of the ones after like 10. Like Titus sucks. He's I, Oh, he does. I I did not care for Final Fantasy 10. Did not care for that game. But like but I think I'm I'm not alone in that one. Like I know a lot of people love Final Fantasy 10, but I also know a lot of people hated Final Fantasy 10. So Oh, it's okay. I you know yeah, I didn't hate it, but I didn't finish it because I was just like, meh, I don't care. I didn't fi- I didn't finish it because my roommate broke my PlayStation. Son of a bitch. Goddamn Jim tripping over the cords, you drunk <laughs> bastard. I mean, he bought me another one, but still, fuck. Like, I was right in the middle of it, and then, like, that was a game that, like, once you lost your momentum, it was like, I guess I'll go play Max Payne then. Mm. <laughs> All right, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. We've been at this for a while, but we still want to do a quick second segment. So uh, uh, listen to us talk about some other bullshit for a little while. (laughs) You are listening to the Stone Age Gamer podcast here on geekade.com. Stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. (laughs) 
So, uh, hey Dan, um, how yeah. you doing? Um, you know, we, I'm good. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm fantastic. Uh, good. We are, we here at Geekade and are teaming up with the Colon Cancer Alliance once again for the Pain in the Assathon 2017. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was yeah. <laughs> I, that's, that's I couldn't. Okay. Yeah, at the appropriate moment. I apologize. That, that that is okay. Do yes, over. we are we are doing uh doing this charity thing again where we play uh, pain in the ass video games for twenty four hours and we do it in order to raise money for the colon cancer alliance. Um, we are not raising money for colon cancer. We are raising money against colon cancer. <laughs> we are raising money to give it to more people because we are not super villains. <laughs> uh, we will be playing games like uh, Dan and I are going to be playing Comic Zone for Which a second. Which sucks. That game is so hard. It's so hard. We're not going to beat that it's, game. We're no, going to fucking we're, try. We're not even going to get... Co- Dude, I'm going to start practicing and then on the live stream be like, I haven't played this in years. <laughs> like, I'm totally going to play it off. Except for people who listen to this episode, because I won't uh, mention that again. But that's the again. thing, like, you won't be able to tell that you've been practicing, because the game's that fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's so unfair. Uh, Are we going to use a Game um, Genie? Can we use a Game Genie? <laughs> nope, nope. No alleviating our pain. By Galoob. I will be playing uh, Zelda Wand of Gamelon for CDI for four solid hours. Uh, and hopefully That's, I will be able to beat it just like I beat Link Faces of Evil. That is fucking three hours and 59 minutes too much of that <laughs> game. I gotta be honest with you. Uh, Dean is gonna be playing Bubsy again, which is gonna be great. Uh, yeah, he's not playing that for long enough. I don't care if he beats it, he's gonna have to play through it again and try to beat his time. <laughs> oh no, if he beats it, he's moving right onto Bubsy too. <laughs> <laughs> I want Dean speedrunning the Bubsy series. <laughs> I have enough Bubsy to last him the rest of his life. <laughs> I have all the Bubsy, except for the new Bubsy that hasn't come out yet. Because, oh my God, this get. new Bubsy game. <laughs> Which we will oh, get. I wi- just I will. Indeed. Like, seriously, that was one of the, that's one of the defining things that makes me want to play PlayStation 4, is I have to have the new Bubsy game. And it's <laughs> only on PS4 and fucking Steam, so. Oh, we have to buy it for him. <laughs> we, can we get, I just... Can we get some listener submissions? Like, that game's going to be like 15 bucks. There's got to be 15 of you that will send us a dollar each to, like, buy that game for Dean. Because I don't actually want to spend money on it, but I'll spend somebody else's. Oh, and speaking of Bubsy, we didn't actually mention this on the show, but the the artwork for a couple episodes ago with Cthubsy <laughs> that Evan... Uh, just uh, the, uh, the the artist's uh, page and stuff is in the show notes. You've, you've got to click on it. Check it out. It's amazing. That, that ca- was an ad within an ad right there. That We're, Cthubsy at art made me so happy. It was, I, it's a masterpiece. Oh so back to the pain in the Azathon. Uh, Ferg from the Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast will be joining us. Uh, he will be playing Sneak and Peek with me, which is basically hide and seek for Atari 2600. And he... And me, and probably Dan, and hopefully Evan, uh, and some other people will be playing World Class Track Meet on the Power Pad. Mm. I am so jazzed for that. Such a bad idea. It's going to be awful. I cannot wait. Mm. Uh, And the latest edition is, uh, let's see, well, Brandon from Apathetic Enthusiasm is going to play Binding of Isaac for like an hour in the middle of the night, which is going to be awesome. That game is a pain in the ass, too. (laughs) And um, Patty from uh, the Mutant Musings podcast is going to be playing X-Men for Sega Genesis. Oh, boy. Boy. I watched a little bit of that game because I haven't played that game in years. Years and years and years. And I watched like a bit of a playthrough of it. The entire soundtrack sounds like a fart. (laughs) Is that the (laughs) side-scrolling one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not as bad as the Nintendo one. Oh God, no, no! The NES X Men is a is just a, a pile of garbage. Like, I don't think X Men for Genesis is a bad game, but it's kind of rough. And yeah. Especially like she does, she's never played it before, mm. so she doesn't know about the she doesn't know about the reset thing, mm. which I'm not going to tell her about, which is going to be interesting. But yeah, anyway, no, that's going to be awesome. Um, August fifth and sixth, starting at 10 a.m. on August fifth, ending at 10 a.m. on August sixth. We and a bunch of other Geekade people are going to be playing a bunch of different games, even more than the ones that we mentioned here, for 24 solid hours, and we might even be raffling off some stuff. We're still we're still working out a bunch of the details, but 
show up, donate some money. It's a really good cause, and it means a lot to us, uh, which is why we're doing this again, which is why we're putting ourselves through this again. It's a good cause, man. Like, it really, all joking aside, like, fucking cancer is horrible. Like, I think we can all, yeah. I think we can all agree, fuck cancer, fuck it right in its stupid ass, and anything, any little bit that we can do to, to try and help just even the tiniest bit, like, because you never know, like, you never know that last little, that $2 donation you made might have gotten the last bit of funding that was needed. Like, you never know what your money goes, you know what I mean? It's true, and it's all going to charity, it's, we, we even spoke to, we had a whole conference call of the Colton Cancer Alliance today, talking about this thing. Um, it's, all the money goes right to the charity, it's, it's a good, good thing, do it, yeah, like, tune we don't, in. We don't need to spend any money on this, because Evan's rich. So we just do it at at, at the the fucking the Evan John Mansion. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> August fifth and sixth, be there, help us out for a good cause. Stay tuned to geekade.com for more details. And we're back. Uh, let's talk about some things that have shown up in the news lately that I really wanted to talk about on the show, and I couldn't find any other place to shoehorn them in. So, <laughs> uh, first and foremost, we mentioned it earlier. I don't think we really talked about this much on the, the E3 episodes or whatever, but Bubsy's fucking coming back, dude. Fuck yeah, Bubsy. There's a new Bubsy game coming out. <laughs> Why is there a new Bubsy game coming out? Why does it look good? It, it doesn't look good, though. It, it looks does. fucking awful. It looks great. What makes me think, like, I, 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 the actual, like, artwork for Bubsy, I think, looks pretty decent. That's what I'm saying. In the, like, in it, the game, he looks hideous. I don't know uh, what, the, what the difference is there, but something is wrong in the in-game footage that they showed. The game looks like trash, but it yeah. is developed by the people who did the last Gianna Sisters game, and that's a pretty decent game. So there's a chance this could be a decent game. And it is very self-aware, it does seem to be. So I, I don't know how this happened. I don't know I don't how either. this happened. I don't know why it's happening. Um, yeah, this this is a bad idea. <laughs> it's a bad idea overall. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Everything anyway. could possibly go wrong with this. Anyway, speaking of bad ideas slash good ideas... Um, uh, so there's been some some new characters added to some some fighting games, yeah. And I feel very differently about these two characters. Thing number one that is just absolutely awesome is fucking Geese Howard is in Tekken Seven, which is dope. That is awesome. I absolutely because that that the, the whole Tekken and Street Fighter thing crossing over is is really cool. But I don't think there's ever been like any sort of like sniffing of Namco and SNK kind of stuff together. And I don't think not so. that I can, not that I can even think of. And to have, it's, he's king of fighters, right? That's yeah. that's where he's yeah, yeah. from originally. Yeah. I can't remember if he was in Fighters Destiny or something. I always get this shit confused. But it's the Geese Howard is in Tekken. That's so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Now the other one that when I read it, I was really excited about is they put Abigail in Street Fighter Five because I am a huge Final Fight fan. And, like, Abigail is, like, this... It was, like, another Ondor clone from, yeah. like, level five or six or whatever. And uh, I was like, shit, they put Abigail in there. I wonder what his design looks like. And then I saw his design. And, and then you saw his design and went, oh. What in the actual heck am I looking at? I don't know. I do not care for this. I don't think his... I mean, I guess his moveset is... is all right. Uh, I like the fact that he still turns red like he did in, in, in Final Fight. I like his stage. I like the music. That stuff's all spot on. But <sighs> he's so big. Like, he just looks awful. And, like, I don't even mind the character's size per se. Like, it is a little out there. Like, he's... Sure, he, but... He freaking dwarfs Hugo, for crying out loud. Like, that's just weird. But, I mean... 
I thought Earthquake was kind of cool in Samurai Showdown, so I don't mind. I yeah. don't necessarily, on principle, mind giant characters. I don't mind that. But there's something about... Street Fighter V has been rubbed me the wrong way since since day one. And I, this is not helping. Like... I I was so I'm always so jazzed to see them go back into the catalog and like I get everyone's pissed off it's like why are you throwing this stupid character and there's some stupid Abigail they put Fei Long in there like we've had we've had these yeah, characters in all the, Fei these Long. games like for real I Fei don't dislike sucks. I don't dislike Fei Long I love I that's the thing I've loved almost every Street Fighter character from from every Street Fighter game like there's only been a small handful of Street Fighter characters that I genuinely dislike, and one of the first ones that I genuinely disliked was Armica from Street Fighter Alpha Three, yeah. and she's in Street Fighter Five. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't like her character design. I, I don't, it, it, nothing against the idea of said character, but I, like the hearts on her boobs, no, go, go scratch. No, yeah, thank you. And it's a little weird. I, I do like that, um, that Abigail has. Like the the Rob Liefeld pouches that he's rocking <laughs> on his on his arms do say Mad Gear Gang on them, yeah, which is kind of like, cool. Like, or they just say Mad Gear on them, so that's kind of cool. They just say Mad Gear, yeah, yeah. It, there's so much that's awesome, all, almost great about this, and I think really, I mean, geez, who who hasn't from Final Fight? Which boss characters haven't made it in there yet? I mean, not that Poison was a boss character, the but. Cop? the cop in there oh what the hell was his name what was the cop's name oh that's gonna bug me i i thrasher I hasn't made it in. how has thrasher not made it in there like the first boss the dude with the glasses the ah, 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 yeah I, the th- how has that guy never made it into street fighter he's freaking ridiculous the cop though that would be hilarious that would be funny. Yo, that was so weird when he like you eat his gum that he spits out and <laughs> refills like all your health what sense does that make? God, I love None. Final Fight. Zero but I mean, sense. you know, freaking Relento love... was great, and Relento's I... cool, and like, I don't know, like this might be cool. I, I hadn't even considered Earthquake until you just said it, but I dug Earthquake in Samurai Showdown too. He was cool. It's like I, I was watching some gameplay of it today. They were live streaming it on uh, Facebook, yeah. and um, he he covers up the health bar. Like that's how big he is. Like yeah, the thing about Earthquake is it kind of. And Samurai Shonan did some some cool camera panning stuff, you know. Yeah, he, this Abigail is so big he covers up the health bar, and when you're on like the versus screen, you basically just see his shoulders. Like he's proportionately weird. He's oddly jacked. Like, and this is another thing I don't understand. People hate Hakan. Why do people hate on Hakan from Street Fighter Four? He's fucking hilarious. I love Hakan, but. I can't I can't back this play. I just can't. He looks stupid. It is a really crappy character design. You know you know what I think the main thing that I don't like about this is? What's it's that? It's not Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Like that I think is the thing that I don't <laughs> like about this. Oh my god, they officially announced Krillin and Piccolo. I know I've I'm only so seen fucking pictures. excited. I want to see a video of it. I, I just want this game in my life. I need Dragon you, Ball Fighter Z and Bubsy like on my PlayStation Four that I don't own. You <laughs> have to get a PlayStation Four so that we can play this, Chris. Absolutely, you have I to. I have to get one. I it's will find not a way. an option at this point. Fighter Z needs to be in my life. If, period. If that it's, game is not coming to Switch, you have to get a PS Four. Dean has a PS Four. Evan has a PS Four. I have a PS Four. <laughs> what the fuck? Over. Just, just, well, until now, there hasn't been <laughs> enough stuff that been like, well, I absolutely need to have this game no matter that, what in my life. That is also completely wrong. However, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> I, this must happen. It must. Uh, yeah, we have to. Play I, this. I need to own that game. It's just, it is a matter of fact. I will have that game. I will get. There is a PS4 in my future somehow. I'll make okay. it happen. Okay. So yeah, Abigail and Street Fighter Five. I'm, yeah. I'm not a fan. I I'm not a fan of Street Fighter Five. I'm yeah. just not. I've I have I played a good solid chunk of time with it with Mike Sheridan a while back, and it did not it did not grab me. And the, what was the what's the other guy? The weird like sad 
Cure reject with the funny hat. Oh, um, not Rashid, right? Is it Rashid? Not no, not Rashid. The, he was another one of the DLC characters, like one of oh, M Bison's Z- guys. Zeku. I, he's maybe? got some sad name like no, Todd or something Ed. like that. Ed, right? Ed. Yeah. Yeah. Ed. Th- what a cruddy character design. What a shitty like, fucking thing. Like you're not even what trying. A, what a bad character. Like you're just ew. not you're just not trying. Stop yeah, it. that's that was that that gets a big fat hairy no from me. And yeah. why is Akuma a lion? I what the fuck is up with that? I don't know. <laughs> He's got gonna... hair. He's got giant th- wads of hair growing out of his neck. What just... the fuck sense does it miss? I That's am... not a beard. It's not coming from the front of his neck. It's coming from the <laughs> sides of his neck. He uh... has a lion's mane and he looks <laughs> so stupid. How did you make Akuma look stupid? I don't God know. Damn it. I'm just going to go back and play Third Strike. I loved four, man. I loved every iteration of four. I thought four was fantastic. I, I like third strike as well, but Jesus criminy, this is not I'm not I'm not ha- not happy with Street Fighter Five at all. No. Making well, me sad. So okay, Chris, now that we're uh now that we're at this part, we've gotten all this stuff out of the way, so now we can actually mm-hmm. start the show and talk about the Kingdom Hearts three trailer. <laughs> Right. Toy Story. It's Toy Story. Eight minutes of Toy Story. I'm sure Kingdom Hearts three is gonna come out someday. And it looks complicated <laughs> as fuck though. Like, did you watch that trailer? There's I a lot going stopped. on in that trailer. There is a lot going on. I, the, Holy the whole, shit! Kingdom Hearts has gotten really complicated over the years, and I, I stopped playing it a long time ago. I don't have a lot of interest in Kingdom Hearts three. I never finished no, did i finish two i really liked kingdom hearts two, but i didn't play any of the 35 sub sequels that they've <laughs> released since and i'm just i don't know man it's not it's not hitting me like uh-uh. it's just not i think it's neat that they they're adding toy story good uh-huh. for them but i mean this game has been in development for so long this has been in the oven for it, this is ridiculous that's taken yeah, this long to make Kingdom Hearts three. It really is, and I am. Sh- you know what? If, if I had any confidence that it would be coming out at an, any reasonable amount of time, like I feel like they announced some sort of release window or release date with that trailer, but I didn't even finish watching it. So no, they, and they didn't. So you didn't miss anything. Oh, well, all right then. You didn't miss anything. We <sighs> did get actually really good news. If I can just interject real quick, um, absolutely. Wolf Among Us season two from Telltale. Oh yeah, I read about that. There's a couple of other. Uh, Telltale stuff. And, uh, Batman season two, the final season of The Walking Dead, but fuck all that noise. Wolf Among Us is the best thing they've done. <laughs> um, it really is. Like Wolf Among Us is fucking great. And that's the Fables one, right? That's the Fables one. The yeah. the the Vertigo Comics Fables um was so good. So good. And getting a second season of that is is just awesome. That is good news. I concur that that is good news. Even though I've never played it, I'm glad it exists. Yeah, you you would you would fucking love it. You would absolutely love it. Um, speaking of things I I would love, I, this isn't even that's not a true transition. No, so. it's not. Uh, but I, but I <laughs> am try, happy. Though. I am very happy that these exist because uh, that's kind of neat. Uh, WWE 2K18 is coming to Switch, which is um, great. Um, yeah, it's the first time uh, wrestling games have been on a Nintendo console since I think 2013. Something like that, yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's that's really cool. I I think having this game on Switch is a good idea. I'm shocked and amazed that it. it, it I'm shocked and amazed that it didn't hit Wii U because it's like this is these are wrestling games. Like they would sell, they would have sold on that system. But whatever. Um, I think it's a great fits for Switch, and I'm also glad that at least they seem to be saying that they're not. You know, this isn't a quick and dirty port. This is something they're doing for the Switch. Yeah. Which makes sense that you're starting to see third parties do that because the system is selling stupid mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And it's not selling stupid well the way that we sold stupid well because we sold Wii Sports to everybody. Switch people are buying because they want to play games on it. Yeah. So which is I, I awesome. feel like that's a good <clears throat> groundwork for third parties. And uh, we just found out that RBI baseball is coming to switch as well. So there's going to be fun. a fucking baseball game on there. So yeah. yay. 
There's already that weird basketball game with the giant heads that uh, yeah. I heard was you know decent. Um, mm. They were skipping out on the like the Switch version didn't have an online mode for the longest time, right? And so as a way to apologize for it taking so long to build the online mode in it, anybody who bought that game gets a free copy of the new Shaq Fu game. <laughs> Which, it, to me, isn't much of an apology. <laughs> I don't know. That new Shaq Fu game might end up being the best thing that comes out this year. No you way, don't know. man. You Not don't know. if Bubsy comes out. There's no That's way it's beating point. Bubsy. <laughs> good point. Next year, I, for the Pitathon, we're going to have to do back-to-back Shaq Fu and Shaq Fu 2. Oh, man. Shaq fu we'll sh- Shaq, Mar- Shaq Fu Marathon, and then just for kicks, we'll play Michael Jordan's cast in the Windy City afterwards. <laughs> and then maybe we'll stream a little bit of Kazam. <laughs> we'll just cry. We'll just sit in a corner and cry. I am Kazam. And then we can watch Steel afterwards. It'll be fucking great. <laughs> Shaq had into this amazing fucking like eight or 12 bars that he did on a fucking Fushnickens record on What's Up Doc Can We Rock. It was fucking great. And it was so cool. Shaq is out al- alidocious. Like he did this whole fucking thing. It was awesome. That should have been the end of Shaq's entertainment career like right there <laughs> go back to playing basketball dude anyway last Old big piece of news powder fucking right uh, yeah yeah last last piece of news that I wanted to talk about is the Atari box so I'm on the mailing list for this thing because I'm fascinated <laughs> like, I'm fascinated they too. were like it's we're the making the sexiest thing. Atari I've ever seen I don't know. It's kind of I don't I don't know how I feel about about the design. It's it's something something's weird about it. Obviously, I, it's not final. This is all concept art. But I when they it. said Atari it. is making something called the Atari Box, and that's all the information we have, I was like, yeah, sign me up. Tell me when more stuff comes out. So I got this email, you know, a couple of days ago, and they were like, all right, we're gonna show you this. This is what the Atari Box is gonna look like. And I'm like, all right, cool. I like the, you know, they're doing the wood grain. It's essentially the same shape as a 2600. Yep. yep. Um, I don't like the fact that the the vent lines go through the whole thing. Like, I think that's the part that I think is a little odd. Okay. Um, you've got the, like, once the grid lines go up to the part that's, like, kind of triangular at the top, like the where the cartridges would have went. Yeah, the pyramid yeah. bit. I think that looks a little weird. But other than that, I do dig the overall slickness of this design. I kind of like the non-wood grain one a little bit better. Really? I love the wood grain one. I, I like I the wood grain one. I am sold on it on, the, on that image alone. I think it I don't know what phenomenal. I, I just love that the email is... Actually, I, I bet I still have the email. Let me see. Um, the, They're just the like, email, we don't know shit. We don't know what we're doing with this thing. We don't know what's inside. Yeah, Atari, here it is. I got the email on Monday at uh, 3.40 a.m. Uh, first look at the Atari box design. And uh, it's it's freaking rad. Like, I do like this design um, for the most part. But I don't see any sort of real inputs on this. So what is it? Is it... It's, um, Inspired it's, by it's a classic Atari design, man. such as wireless the iconic use of wood, ribbed lines, and raised back, we are creating a smooth design with ribs that flow seamlessly all around the body of the product. A uh, front panel that can be either wood or glass, a front-facing logo, indicator lights that glow through the material, and an array of new ports, HDMI, 4X USB, SD. We intend to release two editions, a wood edition and a black and red edition. As you can, I'm just reading the email. At this yeah, point. yeah. Go As ahead. you can guess, those ports suggest modern internal specs. It also means that while we will be delivering classic gaming content, we will also be delivering current gaming content. What the hell does that mean? I don't know, and I don't care. I want one. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing. Like, I, like it doesn't I, even matter. I'm sold on it. Like, I'm looking at this image of it's the front facing wood grain one. Mm-hmm. And you can see the Atari logo, which is still, for my money, best video game logo any company. I fucking love it. It's, it's I agree. Phenomenal. But there's four indicator lights lit up on the front. It appears to be, if I had to guess, that would be the four wireless controllers paired with. 
Mm -hmm. That's that's my guess. And I don't know, man. Like, there's this has the potential to be a huge fucking deal. I don't know that it does. I don't think Atari has the clout to make this a huge fucking deal because besides it looking neat and saying Atari, what could this possibly do to compete with either PlayStation or Nintendo? It could be a Steam box. But don't those already exist? But they suck. If this thing can access PC games, I'm in. If if this is a fully functional and easy to use Steam box, that could be interesting. It the would make sense goes on because to... can't you get most of the old Atari shit like online, like either through good old games or Steam? I believe so. This is how little we play. How much we are not a part of the PC master race. Yeah. I have no the, idea. The if email that's true. goes on to say, "We know you are hungry for more details on specs, games, features, pricing, timing, etc. We're not teasing you intentionally. We want to get this right, so we've opted to share things step by step as we bring Atari Box to life and listen closely to Atari community feedback as we do so. There are a lot of milestones, challenges, and decision points in front of us in the months ahead. We'll be giving you lots more information and status updates as we progress, and we are thrilled to have." Have you along for the ride so i don't know much about what is currently who currently has their hand inside of the rotting corpse of atari at this point um everybody <laughs> i would like I think, to th i think everybody does i would like to hope that this is somebody that wants to do good by the brand because like we mentioned before the atari flashbacks have been getting better each year now granted that's at games but right, like the Atari has not been Atari since for a lo almost as long as I've been alive. You know, like mm -hmm. Atari has not been Atari for a very very long time. It's just been different shell companies holding the name. Now, the current situation with Coleco, um, the people running Coleco being kind of scumbagish. Uh, that's um. I don't know that whole story back to front, but I know that um, there, there's there's definitely been some unhappiness towards that that company, uh, the 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 people that bought the Coleco brand that are trying to do stuff with it. Right, like they kind of rubbed me the wrong way by saying that they put Donkey Kong on the map. Like they're like, oh no, Coleco is responsible for Donkey Kong. Well, uh, not so much. No, not not try really. again. Yeah, Swing you and had miss, it folks. at home, but and that's it was a big deal that Coleco had the home ports of of Donkey Kong, but that game was a huge success in the arcades. That game was a success for Coleco because it was already a success because Nintendo made it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. Like Cabbage Patch Kids, sure, but that's not really part of your video game brand now, is it? So. I don't know. Like they're doing this, they're doing this Coleco Expo that just happens to be the same weekend as the Petathon. So I definitely won't be going to that. Uh, but they also did this whole bit where they were doing copyright claims on homebrews for yeah. ColecoVision, and like that's just I don't know, man. A lot of that, a lot of what that company is doing these days is rubbed me the wrong way. I did appreciate the way that they backed out of the Coleco chameleon. We're just like, no, never mind. <laughs> this is a bunch this is a bunch of horse shit. But they did have their name on it for quite some time. So I and I don't know what they knew and when. So I would like to hope that this would be an inter that this is some sort of interesting thing. But even if it is a functional Steam box, I just don't know that I see this I don't know what this thing is gonna do that's gonna make it a successful consumer electronics product. And I don't know that whatever is left of Atari has the marketing muscle to to make something like this a proper success, at least not any kind of mainstream success. Like You're probably what is this, you're probably right. What is this gonna offer that we can't get anywhere else? I mean, if if it's offering old Atari games, that's great. I can buy the at games Atari flashbacks right. than I have been able to for years. Especially this new one that's going to have an HDMI port on it. So I'm, I have so many questions, but 
somebody at Atari is putting a whole lot of effort into this. And we are in 2017, and Atari is making a new game console. That's awesome. That, that's a fucking story right there. Because we <laughs> wanted the Coleco thing to be good. We did. I remember, yeah, I, I really wanted, wanted that, that to be, to be good. good. I was I, always hoping that they wouldn't stuff it in that Jaguar shell because I, I like original designs. Like, this is awesome. Sure. This yeah. is super cool. But, yeah, if there could have been a new cartridge-based, you know, system like that, that would have been neato. But, unfortunately, it was a pile of shit. It was just not true. So, uh, here we are with this, and I hope it doesn't turn into vaporware. I hope this amounts to something and it amounts to something interesting because I I wouldn't mind having a new Atari system on my shelves. I wouldn't mind having the 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 latest Atari system not be the Jaguar because the Jaguar is <laughs> not a great game system. No, you know? no, it's not. It's not. <sighs> so there we are. That's a that's everything. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we have. This was a long episode. Our, man, when we when we throw a topic together at the last minute, they always happen to turn out to be the very longest shows that we have. And now not we only have that, we spent a good twenty minutes talking about Spider Man before we started <laughs> recording. <laughs> we really did a solid twenty minutes. We, we did not even start this, and now we have to start <laughs> talking about uh, Jody Whitaker as the Doctor. <sighs> <laughs> I don't even have I I recorded this week's episode last night. We already talked about this. Did you? I already talked about this. Yes. Okay. I don't it basically boils down to I don't even know anything about her. So cool. She was great in the first season of Broadchurch. Yep. Cool. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that it does seem it does seem that like Matt much said, it does seem that there's a lot of people being angry at the people for being angry, but those people that they're angry at don't seem to exist. Yeah, like, I've noticed I haven't that too. Seen anybody like? I haven't seen any backlash for the doctor being a woman. Me and neither. I, I, I understand. think it's because the Doctor Who community is not a bunch of bros. I guess. It's a good point. Anyway, good point. that's our show. <laughs> Join us next week for the 10 20 30, where Dan and I will get to talk about games like the original Metal Gear, Dragon yes. Ball GT Final Bout, and Picross DS. I have stories for all of those games. Once again, you can get in touch with us at mail at geekade.com, as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video content, and follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Geekade Chris, that's Geekade K-R-I-S, and Dan is at... At Geekade Dan. If you're interested in more information about anything we discussed here tonight, be sure to check out our show notes. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of other other wonderful podcasts on iTunes or Stitcher. Or if you're super nice, you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. We'd also like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making this show listenable for all you folks. And we'd also like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we have a link to in the show notes. Again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com where we post things all the time. And then eventually I'm going to rewrite that line because <laughs> it's just not fucking true. Uh, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for listening to our show. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. <laughs>